Hi everyone, my name is Cecilia Lachalfari, co-founder of Arasixdoff.com, creative technologist, aspiring journalist and organizer of a Unite Florence event. In November 2021, I had the opportunity to go to the Santa Clara Convention Center in California and to interview Ori Imbar, the co-founder of AWE, who in May 2020, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, had foreseen and set the dates for the first returning the presence of AWE events right in November. But how did Ori Imbar know that the event was actually going to take place? Well, on that occasion, Ori Imbar really managed to predict the future. If you saw, you saw everything that happened during AWE 2021, maybe you need to listen to this interview too. Come on, come with me. So why did we choose November 22 as the date for AWE USA 2021? I have to say it was a huge gamble. Uh, back uh, in June last year, we had no idea what's going to happen in the world. We knew that we cannot do uh, a live event anytime soon. So we picked a day that is far enough, uh, but not too far. And uh, we were just hoping for the best. And you know, when we announced the event uh, at the end of last year and started promoting it earlier this year, we were still pretty much in a very tough time around the world. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we were hoping that people will trust uh, our ability to actually execute on this and that things will become better in the world. And uh, luckily, it actually happened. I think everyone here is so excited that it actually is taking place right now. Uh, even the borders opened just one day before AWE started, which is just an incredible uh, luck uh, that I think we all uh, had. Uh, and yeah, that's, what, that's what's making everyone so, uh, so excited to be able to be here probably for the first time in two years in any event. And some people, it's the first flight they took in two years or, or the first event they went to. So we're really excited they picked AWE as that opportunity. Hi, Yori. It's a pleasure to interview you. You predicted that by 2020, active users in the EXAR sector would grow exponentially. Can we say that this prediction has largely come true? So in 2022, uh, in February, right before the pandemic started, and I was starting to work on my keynote for 2020, uh, it felt like the industry is entering the mainstream. Both for VR and AR, it felt like people uh, are re we're reaching numbers of uh, people that are adopting it on enterprise side, on the consumer side, at a level that we haven't seen until then. So it felt like we're entering the mainstream and from there it can only grow. Uh, and then the pandemic started and all of a sudden the demand for both AR and XR, you know, to be able to do things from home like shop, and, uh, and uh, hang out with other people uh, or using VR for training and for communicating with other people remotely uh, that became a, a huge uh, necessity for everyone. Uh, the demand grew and uh, many companies in the space saw an exponential growth at that time. So here we are in, in 2021. Uh, the life is starting to come back to normal, but it's really not normal because now that we have all experienced the ability to interact and collaborate remotely and to do things remotely using AR or VR, uh, I think we're not going back and we will continue to use it. But it will be kind of a, a mix of things that we do online, remotely, with XR and in person like we're doing here at AWE, which in many ways cannot be replaced. How long will it still take before the industrial sector uses the full potential of XR sector? XR has been uh, adopted in the enterprise space, in the, the industrial space, for quite a while. Uh, it started, uh, you know, in like small pilots, small proof of concepts, as early as 2010 20 to 2015. Uh, but I think at some point, they've started to show significant return on investment and improvement in productivity and safety 
and uh, saving money by using these technologies. And I think we're at a point today where it's common knowledge among most of the large enterprises and many small and medium-sized businesses that XR has proven ROI. And that's continu that continues to drive the adoption of both AR and VR in the enterprise. Uh, a lot of it is currently happening in remote expert assistance using AR or training using VR, which is replacing uh, the need to have people physically in the same space. So that growth is, is already happening today. Uh, but I think uh, the potential is still ahead of us. Uh, the, the hardware is improving constantly. The level of awareness that enterprises have to the potential of AR and VR is improving uh, constantly. And we're starting to see uh, people that are dedicated to adopting XR, immersive technologies, uh, you know, if you, what, what used to, to be the innovation group is now mostly focused on using XR technologies to improve those businesses and help them grow. It's kind of going back to our uh, mantra for this year, which is to thrive in the power of XR, which is, I think, what every business in the world should look at if they haven't done it yet. Do you really think glasses are the breakthrough for AR technology? So the big question is when will AR glasses become really a mainstream product that everyone uses, whether it's for work or for consumers? Uh, we've been kind of trying to track the evolution of these glasses for, for many years now, you know, over 15 years. and. Uh, Although, you know, I think everybody believes that once we get there, that will be the breakthrough technology that will really make everybody want to use AR all day long, again, either at work or uh, in our normal life. Uh, I think there's a lot that we can do and are already doing today uh, with mobile AR, whether it's, you know, on, on mobile devices, projection devices, and even, you know, the, the large and sometimes expensive AR devices that we have today. Uh, there's so much we can do today uh, in terms of uh, learning the user interface, uh, developing content, uh, creating awareness among the people that need these technologies. Uh, they, they can do a lot of these things even today on mobile devices. And that is creating the foundation that is necessary uh, to bring the adoption of air glasses once they really become uh, ready for prime time. But I think even today, if you look at uh, 2021, uh, I think there was over $2 billion worth of smart glasses sold, mostly for enterprise use cases. Uh, but a lot of them, you know, are already uh, in production. They're delivering, delivering great return on investment, um, helping improve productivity at a lot of companies. So the market is already here today, but of course we're waiting for the point where everyone will use augmented reality all the time to improve how they interact with the world. In the last two years, the AI Nights has also changed functionality. From local events that only brought people together physically, they have morphed into digital events that can broaden their audience to an international audience. How much has the period we just lived with COVID influenced in this change in the importance of AI Nights in the world? So On Ice uh, has been really a passion project that uh, started back in 2009. Uh, before even AWE started, uh, I started the first AR meetup in New York City, uh, just as a way to connect with other people that uh, are also passionate about this technology and want to bring it to uh, the masses. Uh, and from there, it continued to grow uh, with the large AWE events. Uh, we started to see a lot of cities that are uh, interested in uh, having, you know, kind of uh, monthly meetings, mon monthly meetups where they get together in a room and uh, show each other, you know, demos and, and uh, startup pitches and uh, help kind of the community grow together. And I feel like, you know, it was kind of something pretty unique 
to the AR industry that is more collaborative than your average industry. Uh, and that continued to grow. Um, today we have over 25 cities around the world that are meeting regularly. Uh, and of course, since the pandemic, most of them went online, uh, which had a lot of benefits to it, actually. Um, the main benefit, of course, is that you know, a meetup in Helsinki can be accessible to a lot of people around the world. Uh, they can have access to great speakers and great companies from other places. And uh, people like me, you know, in New York can actually watch those meetups and participate in real time. Uh, but of course, you know, it doesn't have the same level of energy, the same level of uh, 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 value that, that you see when we meet in the same room. So we're really uh, waiting to see when we'll be able to go back to uh, meeting those, having those meetups in person. Uh, I anticipate it will happen in the next few months. Uh, now that we've all met at AWE and we see that it's possible to meet in person, uh, I think they'll start coming back. And uh, it's not going to be you know, this or the other. I think uh, from now on it will be a mix. We'll go from online to offline and back uh, so that we really get the best of both worlds. Uh, and, uh, and again, have this kind of engagement with the community every day of the year. When will be AWE 2022? Can you also tell us the date of AWE Asia? And when will AWE return to Europe? So, you know, after 893 days of not meeting in person, the XR community met this week for the first time. And it's been so exhilarating for everybody involved. Uh, and now it's uh, almost ending. Uh, we're uh, about to uh, have the wrap-up for the event. Um, but it's, you know, it's not so sad because uh, we can continue uh, this fund, we can continue the energy that we had here on AWE Live. And we'll continue to have that, you know, mini events and uh, on-night meetups. It will run online uh, for the coming months. And the good news is that AWE USA is coming up real quick. It's happening in June of 2022. We'll be back here in Santa Clara, California. Uh, so a lot of people are starting to think about, you know, what they want to talk about, what they want to exhibit, what they want to show off uh, so soon. And that's, uh, that's great. And then after AWE USA, we'll meet in Asia in August 2022 in Shenzhen. Hopefully the borders in China will be open for international travelers, so we'll have a kind of mixed environment from people all over the world. And then uh, in October, we'll be back at AWE Europe. Uh, we'll tell you about the city in the wrap-up session today, so I can't reveal it just yet. Um, but that will be in October 2022. And uh, yeah, these are kind of the big events that we have this year. So again, we'll go from those large events to uh, meetups in the cities and to AWE Live so that we can spread the gospel of uh, XR every day of the year until everyone uses AR XR to improve the world. What are your next project? Forecast for the future? So, you know, our mission has been since we, we started uh, to really drive the adoption of, of AR and VR uh, and to do it in a way that is really the right way, uh, a way that helps create a future for everyone on this planet that is worth living. Uh, so we, so we, in, in addition to kind of organizing these events, you know, helping startups uh, come on stage and pitch and connect with, with investors, help solution providers connect with uh, buyers, corporate buyers that need those solutions, help brands uh, connect with creators and developers. Um, our job is also to help them find kind of the right path towards that, that future that we're all striving for. So we will continue uh, with our mission. Uh, you could look at us as, as activists that uh, not only want to drive the adoption of this technology, but also uh, make sure that it, uh, it's uh, delivered and used in a way that helps humanity fight some of our biggest threats on the planet right now. So, uh, you know, we'll continue every day, whether it's in person, in AW events, 
or online or in any other way we can to achieve this mission. I want to wish Merry Christmas holidays and a Happy New Year. I'm grateful to be part of this world of technologies and I look forward to following all of you to know what will happen in the future. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from me, Cecilia Lasalfari, from alessix.com, from Florence and from all over Italy. I wait for you here in Florence. See you soon in the 2022. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.